Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos, and in today's video, we are going to take a look at the Season 4 Mythic Plus meta game uh, as it is developing so far. So, a lot of weird stuff happening in Season 4, right? You don't have a lot of people initially playing the season on their raiding characters, uh, and with gear acquisition being pretty accelerated this season, uh, a lot of people are already at the stage of pushing really high keys, which often in a regular season, you wouldn't see these groups forming together and pushing keys quite so early in the season because of any group of five players, likely at least one or two of them are involved in raid progression, maybe playing something that's not an M-plus character uh, and playing it in raid instead, and they'll be doing M-plus once they are done with mythic progression but that time this time around that hasn't happened so we actually have a pretty good idea of what the high key metagame uh, is going to look like and uh it is quite bad we're going to level with you guys it's not it's not great uh, a lot of these keys that show up as no healer are uh, involve doing some pulls for a while with your healer in balance and then swapping them over to uh resto for you know, the, the parts of the key where you need a healer, um, depending on the dungeon, that can be more or less of them. Depending on the dungeon, you can play a lot uh, of the dungeon without a healer. Um, you can do these comps as, as, you know, no healer, potentially all the way through. I'm not sure how many of these have actually done swaps halfway through versus not, uh, but that is something that is continuing into this season. Um, but the comp at the very high end is pretty locked in as Vengeance Demon Hunter, Restoration Druid, Aug Evoker, uh, usually Fire Mage, uh, but sometimes Frost, depending on the dungeon. And also, again, it is possible to swap these mid-run. But uh, yeah, both both Mage specs are showing up in these runs. And then a Shadow Priest, unbelievably broken Shadow Priest uh, spec is here. That's what we see in these top 40 runs. Um, as you get a little bit lower out of the top 40, we do start to see a couple of groups making it work with uh, with some other stuff. We've got a, a Brave Prez Evoker Guardian Druid. We've got Holy, a Holy Paladin, a Mystery Vermonk. You know, we're seeing a little bit of Hunter. Uh, there are going to be some Warlocks up here as well in the DPS side that uh, once you get out of the top 100 or so, we've got, we've got a Rep Pally. Uh, eventually, I think we're going to see something that's not a Vengeance Demon Hunter. We've got a Rogue showing up. Uh, they're another Mistweaver, so there's a little bit of other stuff happening here. But compared to a lot of seasons, this is a pretty dominated metagame at the very top end by these few specs. Um, like in, in, in some seasons, right, like if we go to uh, some particularly well-balanced seasons, you can, art, you can see like much more colors on the front page, uh, even though there is, say you know, a dominating tank spec by the end of Dragonflight Season 1. At least it's not tank, healer, and DPS, right? Like, there's a lot of different stuff happening here. So this was, like, a uniquely well-balanced season. Dragonflight Season 4, early on, is looking pretty bad on that count. Although another argument to be made here is, in a lot of seasons, it takes some time to sort of figure out what's going to be good over the course of the season. Season 4 has brought relatively few class balance adjustments, um, the set bonuses are all existing set bonuses, so we kind of know how valuable they all are in M+. And uh, so, unlike a regular season, there may be less of like a discovery period, less of a learning period, and it might be the case that just the meta is kind of pre-coalesced into a pretty uh, strict setup. Now, that's how things look at the very, very, very top end of keys, but these are plus 20 keystones, which are basically plus 30 keystones in the previous seasons, right? Because there was 10 levels of key change. Uh, so let's take a look at how things are developing in the lower key levels. Um, so this is, again, the Raider IO data here. This is what is happening across all keys. And it's worth noting that the all keys distribution here is going to be more elitist, to use a word that uh, is kind of unfair, but is, I think, a good way of describing what's happening here, right? It's higher keys, basically, uh, because all the keys that were previously in the plus 2 to plus 10 range have now been, in theory, wrapped up into M0s instead. So a bunch of potentially low keys that would maybe be being done on a bunch of random different stuff where the meta is much less uh, enforced, is even in pugs, especially in pugs even, uh, those aren't in the data set anymore. So I don't think it's really fair to compare this all levels graph with all levels from previous seasons. Like I think if you wanted to compare this to season three, you'd want to compare this not to the all levels, but to the, the 10 and up, uh, which is unfortunately the filter's not working here for, uh, for Raider IO for that, but uh, it does, as you can see, get a lot more Avengers Demon Hunter dominated as we go up. 
on the tank side of things. Uh, so in the low keys, we've got a bunch of Blood DKs seeing success, a lot of prop pallies, uh, and then a few people playing Warrior, Brew being the least popular. Uh, so it's a good thing we nerfed them last uh, week. That was a, uh, this was good. This tank really, really needed it. I think 6.4%, we can get that lower. We can get that number lower. Uh, and Bear coming in at fourth as well. Uh, as you add in the second affix, I guess we want, yeah, okay, this is this is the five to nine range, so not five and up range. Um, pretty much the same distribution. As we get to the 10 and up range, which again, now we're talking about a pretty small fraction of keys already, right? This is already pretty high keys, especially this early in the season. Um, a lot of people haven't even done a single key at this level uh, yet or at all, right? This is uh, this is pretty low, um, low play rate compared to the other stuff. 56% Vendor Seaman Hunter. As we get to 15 and up, which is where I would I would call this like, you know, big push keys this early in the season, uh, Vendor Seaman Hunter now occupies a 90% share of the metagame at that point. So an extremely dominant tank spec uh, for this, not just for this point in the season, but at any point, 90% is a big, big bad number. Uh, the metagame for tanks is extremely, extremely dominated by Vengeance Seaman Hunter. And that does bleed into the lower keys, right? The the one affix keys, the two affix keys. It's bled. It's you know a lot less bad for that. But I know that particularly if you're pugging, a lot of groups are looking just for Vengeance Demon Hunters. Now, in some seasons, people don't like to hear this, but in some seasons it's very fair to be like, oh yeah, we you know like in in season two of Dragonflight, like yeah, why don't we just take the Guardian Druid because that person you know they could have they could ha they could be like thirty times stupider than the. Uh, than the Blood Decay applying to my group, and they'll still live because they're playing a, an OP tank spec. This season, that's not a smart thing to do as a group leader with Vengeance Demon Hunters, because if you're playing a plus five key, and you get two equally geared, equally scored Vengeance Demon Hunter and a Guardian Druid signing up to your group, like the Vengeance Demon Hunter isn't actually better structurally than the, the Guardian Druid this season, because the Vengeance Demon Hunter's power comes from Sigil of Chains, which that person doesn't even have talented, right? That that, that Vengeance Demon Hunter signing up to your level 5 key. They don't have Sigil of Chain Silenced, talented. They don't have Sigil of Misery cooldown reduction on their tree. You know, they're not they're not pressing those buttons on CD anyways. Like, you're... It, this is one of the places where if, you're, if you are a pug leader, like, it's not just even a case of like, no, come on, don't enforce the meta. Like, it's, you're just not actually accomplishing anything by... Um, by you know taking pug v vendors even hunters over pug other tanks it's not it's not uh, there's no point to it this season but of course as you do start getting into high keys you know if you're playing as you're starting to play with vendors even hunters that do use those sigils you know there are a lot of pulls that just it's not that they don't work without a vendors even hunter it's that if you try and do the first pull of azure vault where you just pull everything you can either do that by having all five people of your group in voice with a planned order of who's cc'ing what or you can do it by having one Vengeance Demon Hunter who will press all of their sigils in some order of their choosing however they want over the course of that pull. And either of those strategies works. So the Vengeance Demon Hunter makes it 30 times easier to do that pull. Um, and that's part of why they become dominant even at the plus 10 level. And as you start getting up to the really, really high key level, it's just so good because you get to combine the Vengeance Demon Hunter stopping everything in the pull. And then you also have everybody else's CCs in a coordinated fashion. And it's just absolutely insane compared to what any other tank can bring uh, over on the healing side of things our metagame across all key levels is reasonably good looking uh, it is the paladins and the prez evokers that are suffering the most but healing priests if we combine holy and disc actually edge out the resto druids in the overall uh, resto druids extremely dominant in the very top end keys as we already established uh, but we also have resto shaman actually beating out mistweaver which was a, a dominating healer last season for a while resto shaman in a pretty pretty fun place got a pretty fun set bonus uh, i've been playing resto shaman this season it's it's been it's been pretty fun but it's been at that plus 10 key level once we do get to the level 10 and up we do start to see uh things moving in the resto druid direction a little bit but still you know compare this to what's happening at tanks at 10 and up right like mo more than the vendor team hunter population almost doubles as we go from not 10 and up to 10 and up the Resto Druid population moves up from 25% to a little bit below 30%, right? So the Resto Druid population increases, but this is a much healthier increase that signifies a spec that is not dominating in quite the same way uh, where, you know, if you're, say, if you're a healer pushing title this season and they don't do any balance changes, there are a lot of viable options for you. If you're a tank pushing title this season, 
Your options are play Avenger Demon Hunter or be one of the very best players in the world at the other tank specs and have a group that is willing to accommodate you, which there are going to be some people that fall into that category, but it's a much worse uh, metagame situation, in my opinion. Much um, Something that really should try and, they should try and change that. Um, as we get to the 15 and up keys, we do start to see, you know, these are the very high push keys. We see Rester Druid making their way into the 60% metagame share, which is to be expected. It's never... Obviously, like, if possible, we'd love it. We love it when there's a season like, uh, like Dragonflight Season 3 for healers, where you actually have, among the top 2,000 keys, you know, double-digit representation of four different healer specs. Incredible. We love that. That's, that's great. But it's not really that realistic that that'll happen uh, in a lot of seasons. And so, but even right now, it's, I guess, technically still true for this week, although last week it wasn't. And uh, this, so this is a website called mythicstats.com. And it shows, uh, yeah, diversity in the top 2,000 keys each week. But you always got to be careful about reading the current week because uh, there's just, you know, right now I'm recording this three days into the week or whatever. There's not been a lot of runs yet. So it always looks more diverse in the, at the start of a week than it, it usually does um, by the end. But anyways, even still, like healers in a pretty good spot here. Um, maybe Resto is going to creep up at, over the 73%. Maybe it's going to get up to 80. Maybe it's going to warrant... Uh, some adjustment, but it's not quite, it's nowhere close to the like 95% on week two that Vengeance uh, achieved and is probably going to, is probably going to maintain around there. That's something that I think is much more uh, bad. Here's another graph that is pretty cool as well. That's the M plus runs per week that uh, Mythic Plus poster puts up on the competitive WoW subreddit, uh, which is, I think, pretty cool showing that season four obviously started lower than all the other seasons. This is sort of natural because there's not as many people playing this season because, you know, it's the season that makes the most sense to miss because it doesn't have any new content. But also, uh, all of those plus two to plus ten keys have disappeared, right? Like anybody who just runs plus two to plus ten keys isn't going to do any keys this season, right? Um, so that also would be expected to bring down the M plus participation. Uh, but we can see actually that even though it started low, it's been pretty robust over the first two weeks in not declining. If you look at season one, we saw a massive, almost half of decline by the second week, although that was a bad affix week. Uh, and it did recover a little bit in weeks three, but it's still week three was like two thirds of what week one was. Uh, there was a consistent decline in key participation over the first three weeks of season three. Season two fell off the rails on the third week. Whereas season four, both the second and third weeks have actually had more keys done than the first week, which I think is a good sign for longevity of the season. The people that are playing the season are having fun. Uh, I think largely due to gear acquisition being in a better state than it usually is and ma making it so that it's pretty encouraging and rewarding to play. As we enter weeks four and five, we're going to test the hypothesis of, like, people are going to start getting close to fully geared pretty early in the season, and maybe there will be, therefore, no further rewards doing keys. So we'll test to see, does season four participation fall off a cliff around there? It's going to be tough because if it happens here during week four, maybe that's Mop Remix, maybe that's Cataclassic, maybe that's Diablo 4 season four. Uh, that one that one is probably less of a clean link than Mop Remix, for instance, would be. So, you know, if we see a big drop off, it's uh, th that is going to be tough to attribute to which of those factors it is. But, you know, if this stays consistent across the next few weeks, if it stays up above that, you know, 1.2 million mark, for instance, I think that's really strong evidence that a good gear acquisition system, right, is like really that causes people to play more, not less, if they can get the cool items that they want, uh, which I hope that's true because I have a lot more fun when that's true as well. Uh, it is worth noting here this season three week as well had the, um, or the third week here had the M plus bonus event that rewarded two bullions. So maybe that, that should have maybe pushed a lot more M plus than it actually did. So maybe this is like a fake inflated number. I don't know. Anyways, um, Back over to the the meta side of things. We did a little detour there to my other tabs that I had open that I, I was planning to look at that, that last graph later, but I pressed Alt-Tab instead of... Or I pressed Control-Tab instead of Control-Shift-Tab. So I went forward instead of backwards in my tabs like I'd intended to. Oopsie, these things happen. Uh, here's the DPS meta across all keys. So even though at the high end we see a lot of Aug Evokers, a lot of Frost, a lot of Shadow, Aug Evoker is actually one of the least popular DPS specs across all keys, right? This is a sub 3% spec. Uh, it's down there with those shamans, uh, with those windwalkers. Across all keys, Ret Pally, by far the most popular spec uh, in the all keys. 
BM Hunter, also extremely popular, not super popular in high keys. Shadow is really the only spec that is dominating in the high keys, the low keys, the in-between keys, the everything keys. Shadow is, uh, is doing really well. Um, as we do cull into the higher keys, uh, you still see a bunch of rep hallies in the 10 and up range. Uh, we start to see Aug now passing Dev, Dev more popular in the all key range, Aug more popular as we get to 10 and up. Um, we start to see also a lot of these off-meta stuff start to really lose share, start to drop below that 2% mark, which is sort of normal. Uh, there have been some seasons where there have been a lot of like 7% specs, but that's pretty rare. This is still, I think, I would say pretty good DPS representation at the 10 and up range. Um, a pretty good mix of things that all kind of work. As we get to the 15 and up range, that's where we start to really strictly see that, okay, there is, you know, a dominating comp of... Shadow Priest is the most obvious one. Shadow Priest is the most incredible of these specs. Uh, most powerful, I would say, by a mile. The one that is probably the most just clearly head and shoulders above the rest. And then you can pair the Shadow Priest with... The Rep Pallies aren't bad. They're also just extremely popular, right? There's a really high population of Rep Pallies. Uh, a lot of Rep Pallies that have farmed their Lego and are just... Uh, they're playing their Rep Pally. They're having a blast. Um, or you can pair it with either flavor of mage. The two mages combine almost reach the Shadow Priest representation amount, so it's the, definitely the next most popular thing. Uh, Destro Lock as well. Uh, that spec's looking pretty unpopular. I think we got to buff that spec again. That spec definitely needs a buff. And we got a Nerf Brewmaster again. That's uh, another good idea here. That'll help make the, met the meta better. Uh, and then we have Aug Evoker, also now the second most popular individual spec as you get to 15 and up. But again, remember, 15 and up is, a, is the nosebleed keys right now. Like, this is really high keys for this early in the season. So I would say the DPS meta is also looking reasonably robust. Uh, I would call for some changes still to DPS, but I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't want to nerf much of this. I don't think Rep Pally, for instance, needs a nerf, even though it's extremely popular. I do think Shadow needs a nerf. Um, you could also maybe take a little bit off of Mage, maybe a little bit, and then maybe we... Maybe we don't nerf Destro, but maybe we stop buffing them, right? Maybe it's okay there where it is. Maybe we do nerf Destro, um, although it's tough because the Inferno, you know, nerf that would make sense is one that they already accidentally pushed as like a War Within bug fix thing. But now they, like, I think it's probably getting close to the point where if they actually nerf Destro so that it's not doing 5 mil in AoE and it's now just doing 2 mil, like that still would be a really good spec, but... Uh, it would be such a big nerf at this point that that would maybe get a lot of complaints. So as long as we just stop buffing Destro, that's fine. Uh, and then some specs here could use some buffs. They already buffed Af uh, last week, but I think Af could use a single target buff. Arcane could certainly use a little buff. Uh, Ellie enhance for sure. Serve, let's make their set bonus good. Let's let's make it so that it's worth putting on some 528 tier because right now it's not. Um, Assassination's already been buffed. Maybe we can give them a little tap up again. Um, Fury already been buffed. Maybe could be a buff again. I think targeting the set bonus again would be good for them uh, to be going upwards. But really, like, most of this stuff is is kind of fine. You know, I think the sh a shadow nerf would go a long way towards opening up the high-end meta. And um, the augmentation evoker situation in high keys, that's a bigger problem, I think, than one that can be easily tackled uh, in a... Because, like, as we already talked about... Aug is not the most popular evoker DPS spec in all key levels, right? It's dev that's more popular. The people that are enjoying augmentation evoker, like the casual support players, um, if you nerf Aug again so that it stops being worth bringing in these keys, it's going to suck for a regular, you know, regular Joe gets back from uh, seven days, you know, work, working 12 hours a day, seven days, has, has 33 minutes to play World of Warcraft every week hops on their Aug Evoker, and it's just, uh, it's been nerfed again because, you know, these people are able to make it sing in these super high coordination environments. Um, it already kind of sucks in Loki. Like, it, if I'm doing a weekly 10 and I'm playing my Evoker, I'm playing Dev 100% of the time, even in a, in a weekly 10, right? And if I'm lower than a 10, I'm 1,000% playing Dev. So, yeah, the Aug question is a hard one to solve. I don't have, I don't think that we touch Aug this season. If I was, if I was a Blizzard balance person, I'd be like, you know what? Aug is fine. That's fine. We'll we'll deal with that later or not at all. That's too hard. The things that aren't too hard are maybe we make Shadow Freeze do a little bit less damage. Uh, maybe maybe we uh 
maybe we take a look at Psychic Link, an ability that we've tuned 40 times this expansion, and we tune it the 41st time. Maybe the 41st time we touch the, the Psychic Link coefficient will be the one that finally makes the spec work uh, in, a, in a fair way, but still be brought, right? And then I'd be like, oh, none of the serve. Let's just take a let's just take a quick look at the spec leaderboards for Survival Hunter real quick here. Let's just let's just see what's going on. Let's see what the top serve hunter is uh, is doing here. Oh, I guess they just must not have dropped the new tier yet because they're still wearing all this 489 old tier. I guess they just got really unlucky and they just did. Oh, this person. Wait, I didn't load the right tab. And now Raider I was being really slow on me, so my little funny rant is getting a lot less funny now because the page isn't loading. Now it's kind of. Uh, Control R for refresh. All right, it's not happening. It's not happening. We'll open the third person. Uh, right, right, right. Okay, don't fail me now. Though this person is wearing tier. Okay, they got lucky and they dropped their they dropped their new tier set bonus. But uh, the top serve hunter, they're still wearing they're still wearing those four eighty nines. The fourth serve hunter is also dro also wearing new tier. Hang on, maybe serve hunter's fine. Maybe you put on the new tier. Uh, what about the fifth serve hunter? The the page doesn't load. Okay, they're also wearing new tier. Okay, so it's literally only the top, uh, the top surf hunter. Yeah, maybe surf hunter is fine. Maybe that's just a, a fluke that the oh the, the sixth one as well. They haven't dropped their new tier yet. They're still all on four eighty nines. Anyways, um, I don't really remember where I was going with this. I was ranting about yeah, surf hunter. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make their tier worth equipping. Um, prop pally, blood DK as well. Those, those changes. Got, we gotta do those. Um, but anyways, the meta for this season for like. For keys, it's not great in a lot of ways, but it's not bad. And the season is just inherently fun because of the gearing situation. There are a lot of specs that it's fun to be playing right now. Um, most of the tanks are really fun to play. It's just that when you're playing five of them, you are acutely aware that you're not playing Avengers Demon Hunter. And that's like that's the, only, that's the biggest problem with Prot Warrior right now is that when you're playing it, you don't have Sigil of Silence and you know it. Um, but you actually, you have Disrupting Shout, which is kind of close these days, so you really, really, it's really not that much worse, it's just, it's enough worse that you feel it, um, but there's nothing, like, actually wrong with the other tank specs, they're just not Vendor Demon Hunters. Um, the healer side of things as well, like, you could tone down Rest Druid a bit, maybe, you could certainly tone up, uh, some of the other specs a, a little bit as well, but... That's really not bad. The DPS side of things also really not bad, aside from Shadow Priest, I think, being the uh, the most egregious outlier there, and Augmentation of Ochre being a huge can of worms that is impossible to solve uh, easily. But yeah, that's that's my look at the M plus meta. Went a little bit ranty, a little bit rambly over the course of this video, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video, though. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.